Hey, how's it going on guys? So in this video, we'll discuss about this problem, maximum sum circular sub array. Given a circular array C of integers represented by A, find the maximum possible sum of a non-empty sub array of C. So before jumping to the solution to this problem, I want you guys to solve one more problem that is maximum sub array problem on lead code. So let me just show you guys that problem. So this is the problem, maximum sub array. I'll link down this problem and its solution in the description section. So you can just look at this problem and the solution first and then come to the current problem. You can consider this problem as a prerequisite to the current problem. So the algorithm that we use to solve this problem is known as Kidan's algorithm. The, okay, so both the problems are actually similar. So the only difference being the current array is circular. That is the sub array can be circular. Okay, so let us see how we can solve the current problem. So let us consider some examples. As you can see for the first example, the maximum sum sub array is 3 comma 4 and the output being 3 plus 4, which is 7. So in the next example, you can see that the maximum sum sub array is this 5 comma 5. That is, it starts over here and ends over here. So this is what I mean when I said the sub array can be circular, correct? So the output is 10. For the next example also, the sub array starts over here and ends over here. The output being 2 plus minus 1 plus 3, which is 4. And for the last example, when all the values are negative, the sub array is this, that is minus 1. So the output is minus 1. So let us see how we can solve this problem. Now, if you see carefully, we can break this problem into two cases. The first case being the maximum sub array is not circular. That is something like this, this case. Now, I already know how to solve the problem for this case. How? Because the problem that I told you about is actually this problem only. Correct. So, for, so first go through this problem and its solution and then you will be able to know how to calculate the maximum sub array for a non-circular array. Correct. So once you know about it, you can easily solve it for this case. So case one is nothing else but the previous problem. Correct. The next case is when the max sub array is circular, that is the max sub array is split across that is starts somewhere in the middle and it ends somewhere in the middle, something like this. So it starts over here and ends over here, something like over here as well. It starts over here and ends over here. So how can we calculate the maximum sub array in these two cases in such cases? So if you see carefully, we can break down this problem to this problem that is consider this single array that is 0 to n minus 1. So we are saying it is starting at some place over here and it's ending at some place over here. Correct. So if you see carefully, we can find this value using Kitten's algorithm only. How? Just find a total sum for this and find the minimum sub, sub array sum. Now we know how to find the maximum sub array sum using the Kitten's algorithm. You can find the minimum sub array sum using the Kitten's algorithm again and you can simply take total minus min sum to find for this case. Correct. So once you have answer to this case in max sum and once you have answer to this using total minus min sum, you can just take the max of these two values and you will get to the answer. There exists only one corner case which I will show you. So this corner case exists when all the values are negative. So if you try to uh, apply this thing over here, what happens is you will find the max sum to be minus one, correct? The min sum to be minus six and the total to be minus six. Total is minus six, minus two, plus minus three, plus minus one. The maximum sum sub array is minus one only and the minimum sum sub array is the entire array that is minus two, plus minus three, plus minus one, which is minus six. So if you use this, then you will get a zero because total and min sum are same. So what we do in this case is, in case the max sum is negative, so max sum can be negative only in case all the values are negative. So in that case, we will simply return the maximum. So let me write the code for this question and then things will be more clear. So what we will do is we'll maintain some values like int max equals integer dot min value min equals integer dot max value then you can say current one as zero, current two as zero and total as zero. 
नेक्स्ट वी लिटरेट ओवर दे गए सो फर्स्ट वॉट विल डू इज विल से करेंट वन प्लस इक्वल्स ए ऑफ आई देन विल से मैक्स इक्वल्स मैथ डॉट मैक्स ऑफ मैक्स कॉमा करेंट वन एंड देन विल से करेंट वन इक्वल्स मैथ डॉट मैक्स ऑफ करेंट वन कॉमा जीरो नाउ इन केस यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम्स वाई वाई एम डूइंग दिस सो आई एव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दिस क्वेश्चन इज बेस्ड ऑन this question so first you have to solve this question you need to know the algorithm that is the cadence algorithm and then you can jump to this question so you will be able to know all these steps why i'm doing this if you know that problem okay so once i have this then i'll apply the same algorithm to find the min sub array as well so what i'm doing is i'm just uh, finding for these two cases so i need the maximum sub array and then i need the minimum sub array and i need the total as well so what i do is the first value being max sum the second value being this thing correct so i'll just calculate the min sum also using the same technique i'll just make some changes so current one will be current 2 this will be min we will take math dot min of min comma current 2 and current 2 will be math dot min of current 2 comma 0 correct then we will have total in the total we will add all the elements so it will be a of i so now what we will do is we will just simply return we will first check in case max is negative in uh, in that case we will simply return max otherwise we will return math dot max of max comma total minus min okay so let me just run this code so it's giving the correct result let me submit the solution so it got accepted so i just want to repeat one more thing over here that in order to solve this problem you need to know about this problem you need to know this algorithm first this is the cadence algorithm first you get a grasp over this algorithm you can simply solve this problem this problem is very simple in case you know that problem so i guess that's it from the video in case you have learned anything from the video you can hit that like button and in order to support my work you may consider subscribing to my channel thank you